hello and welcome to the Hellraiser YouTube channel. Please, if you enjoy today's vlog, hit the subscribe button. We, um, we always welcome new members to the Hellraiser boxing family. Uh, today's vlog, I'm going to talk about the big fight next weekend between Dillian White, the WBC number one ranked heavyweight, and Joseph Parker. There's a huge amount at stake in this fight, and uh, it's a really, really interesting uh, fight for us to get. I've got to say, when I first heard of the fight, I, mean, I know Dillian from way back, uh, I, was at, I was present at his first pro fight, I never saw him boxing the amateurs, only on uh, YouTube and, and social media and so forth. I knew about him because he'd beaten Anthony Joshua, but the first I saw of him was at Medway Park when he made his debut. His second fight was actually on one of my shows and he boxed on about sort of three or four of my, my shows early on. Um, and uh, he was impressive, he, he, was, you know, he was way above average and you could see he was gonna go somewhere. Did I, I didn't think he was gonna go to WBC number one at heavyweight, I, I have to be honest, I didn't think he would go that far. But he was good and he's done very well, uh, gave Anthony Joshua a real fright. And um, now, I've got to say, when, when I heard of this fight, I was just completely knocked out of uh, my stride. I, I just uh, cannot understand how a guy who is number one in the WBC ratings, mandatory, means that if he's mandatory, he has to fight for the, the title. He's gonna get made mandatory, he fights for the title. He can just say, I want this much money. If I don't get that much money, I'm going to purse bids or I'm gonna go elsewhere and try and do a deal. And um, it, it complicates things and it would earn him a huge amount of money. He won't be earning anywhere near that to fight Joseph Parker, which is why I just cannot make sense of what, why. I mean, I do understand it's an intermittent sort of payday. But, I mean, the cynic in me makes me think, well, maybe it suits uh, match room for him to do that. Because Parker could beat him. Um, White is a huge risk to, to AJ. We saw what happened the first time. Um, they, they, whatever the reason is, look, we've got a really, really good fight, and you've got to take your hat off to match room for putting this on, because this is a, uh, you know, they've put it together, and it's a brilliant fight. It's a really, really entertaining fight. I'm a big boxing fan, and we're going to see two... No, we want to see Dillian White against Joseph Parker, not Dillian White against some guy we know he's going to topple over in like three or four rounds. Um, like I say, when I first heard of this, I just thought he needs to go and grab his boxing manager and give his head a wobble because this makes no sense. But that's Dillian White. You know, he's a risk taker. Um, it's a huge risk to take for very little reward, but it's going to be very entertaining. We, we going to see a really um, good fight and I've got to applaud White really despite the fact that it doesn't make sense necessarily I think wow this is what boxing fans want you know uh, a fair play to Matchroom for, for putting it on for getting it together for speaking to the managers because you know it, it, they, it's hard to make those kind of fights and they, they've managed to, to put it together and as a boxing fan that's exactly what I relish what I want to see um, why I think it's such a big risk because Parker I think Parker, you're going to see a far more aggressive Joseph Parker, far more assertive than what you saw against Anthony Joshua. I mean, we, we had a Klitschko reign for however many years, which was um, filled with ball fests. And I think I wasn't the only person that was happy to see that was the end of him. I like Klitschko as a person, but, you know, the, the jab and grab, we had enough of it. And um, I was dismayed somewhat when in his first fight, uh, since Klitschko sort of announced he's retiring, it's like Joshua inherited that jab and grab against Parker, you know, and it just made for an absolute snooze face. For me, it was Joshua's worst fight by a stretch. Um, I normally look forward to his fights. That one, halfway through it, I can predict what was going to happen, and, and, and it did happen, and it uh, wasn't the tactics that I anticipate to come from Anthony Joshua. Um, Parker himself often states I'm here for war I'm coming you know but in the big fights against good opposition I mean yeah against some of those guys he was boxing early on who came to war and he won but in the big fights like the the Huey Fury in the uh, Anthony Joshua fight he hasn't done that he hasn't come to have a war he came to poke his way through it and I can't help thinking that the morning after the Joshua fight surely at some point there was a point where he just thought what on earth have I done I had a world title it drifted away from me. I let it go. Just you know, didn't didn't uh, step out of his comfort zone. He basically took the choice on the night 
I'll just get beat on points. That's fine. You know, don't get knocked out. I'm just like, like a journeyman would go. But this is a world heavyweight title fight. For, for, for the stakes are very, very high. Um, I think um, here you're going to see far more assertion coming from uh, Joe Parker. Um, and I think he, he has to because if he can take three or four rounds early on, which is a big ask, but he's capable of doing it, he's got fast hands. If he can nick those early rounds, it then forces White to come to him. And White coming to him will play into Parker's hands. We've seen Parker, we know he's a good mover, he's got very fast hands. Uh, I, I'm going to run through the tactics that I think, because I certainly don't expect Parker to come wading into White to have a war with him, but he has to be far more assert assertive. I think he will be because of what happened with Joshua. I can't believe that that can rest with any fighter well, that you were losing, you were trailing after sort of five or six rounds and you just carried on the same tactic throughout, you know, and then eventually at the end the referee sort of said that's the end of the fight and the judges gave it to the other guy and we all went home and had a good laugh about it. No, that doesn't happen. He, that, it's got to have rankled with him. If he's got any warrior in him at all, that would have really, really irked him and would, would call him, cause him uh, sleepless nights. He doesn't really seem like the kind of person to, to get that. I know he says I'm a warrior, I'm here for war, but that, that's not what I've seen with my own eyes. So what are we going to see? I think we are going to see a far more assertive Parker. I think he's going to come and try and nick rounds early because then he knows that White has to come to him, which makes the fight far easier for Parker. Um, I, I mean, I think, um, I don't, like I said, I don't expect Parker to wade into White, but I do expect him, I mean in, against Joshua, he just, he boxed off the back foot throughout, he poked with his punches rather than throw them with any serious conviction, he didn't throw combinations, he was happy just to sort of spar his way through it. This fight I think we're going to see differences. Tactically, I think, okay, so Parker needs to take, like I said, but he needs to take that initiative early, he needs to hold the centre of the ring. You know, he, he, he can't give away the centre of the ring in the way that we saw him, you know, many times. Um, he, he, he needs to hold it for longer and I think uh, you know he's with Kevin Barry Kevin Barry knows boxing he, he would have been working on that and I think he, you're going to see him hold that centre of the ring a lot longer um, not standing stationary he'll be constantly changing the angles but he will make a point of holding that centre of the ring so that it gives him a little bit more movement and a bit few more he certainly doesn't want to be sit, sat on the ropes I mean White needs to push him to the ropes but Parker needs to work ways so he doesn't end up sitting on the ropes. Um, and Parker needs to double up on his jab. Dillian White, very good head movement, so single shots are perfect for him. He can slip and counter. But as soon as there's double jabs or double jab right hand, double jab right uppercut, um, it actually makes it very difficult to, to use the, the, the block and slip tactics that Dillian White uh, likes to use. Um, White, for his side, well, he needs to do the opposite. He needs to cut down the ring very early. He needs to walk Parker to the ropes and not allow him to have that space because Parker's got faster hands. I'm sure of that than, than, than Dillian. And if he, right, they're, they're both six foot four. White's got two inch reach advantage. Um, but because Parker is faster, I think if, if they go for, for trying to jab each other's heads off, I think Parker's going to get it. So White needs to walk him to the ropes, keep him at close range. Um, Cut that ranginess out that, that we know that Parker's got. And White's got very good head movement. He's always had good head movement. And he needs to use that to get inside and land some bombs to the body. Take Because that will slow the movement of Parker. Um, Parker's got exceptionally slick, quick hands. Um, White's got exceptional head movement. Um, White's stamina there's been issues with. And uh, you know we could see traces of that in, in, in this fight because I think Park will force him to work hard from an early point. I'd be very interested to see the weight. If he comes above a uh, high 17s, like 17, 12, something like that, I think White is going to be really pushed to his limit uh, in terms of cardio and physically. Um, quite surprised that Parker arrived just eight days before the fight. I know he's only come from Vegas, not from New Zealand, but I would have got him here earlier. Um, and I think that might weigh in in uh, White's favour in down the stretch. But I'm going to tell you prediction time. Eddie Hearn said he's surprised that Parker is the favourite. I'm not. I think Parker wins it. I think Parker wins on points. Um, 
and I think, I mean, look, we'll see, we'll see. But um, please, guys, give us a subscribe and uh, enjoy the fight, and please give me a comment. Comments. See you soon. Bye bye.